all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So let me say, and I love you back. And I love you back. So let me say, my heart is full today. My heart is full today, full of gratitude for the trust you have placed in me, full of love for our country, and full of resolve. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for, but hear me when I say, hear me when I say, the light of America's promise will always burn bright. This is Joe. See, I should have run and I would have won. But you all stopped me. Shame on you all. Thanks, but I really don't need the help. I've been doing this a long time, Jack. Why don't you? All just go suck an egg. You all just threw me under the bus. Just so you could crack wall and burn before the finish line. Great lesson to teach, guys. If my friends, colleagues, the press and others would have stuck with me, we could have had another four years. But you didn't. So you rushed poor Kamala onto the stage without being ready. You quickly discarded me. Called yourselves the 21st century donkey Titanic. Then you rushed wildly ahead and right into the Trump iceberg. And why did you do it? I told you that I was the only one who could beat Trump. But we'd listen with you if you had. We'd have four more years in the White House and Kamala would have really been ready to go in 2029. No, all you Democrats screwed it all up now, I hope. You were all happy with the mess you made. Now, what are you going to do, huh? You going to rally around Trump? I bet some of you may try to suck up. But a lot of you sad folk are so far left now that you make. Stalin Link like a pathetic choir boy. Aren't you? Even most of the entertainment industry is crashing and burning to the ground because you poor slobs in Hollywood can't even figure out what gender your characters are, let alone come up with an entertaining storyline that's rational. Audiences would be willing to pay to go see. You all call me irrational and out of touch for that. That is why I watch AMC. Because that is the where the real world of elegant story, art, culture, and rational thought is. Not in this mixed up kid world all you think you live in. I know there is some talent somewhere in Hollywood. You just need to tap into it because believe me when I say this, there are actually vulnerable people out there that do really pay attention to the sad misguided garbage that you spew and it is harming them. And this garbage of yours has infected enough of the population that it is beginning to alarm enough people against it that it's starting to cause more Democrats to vote Republican. So you two have abandoned me and you liberal Hollywood have aided Trump and helped destroy Kamala's chances to win this election. Really? And that's just sad. If all you hacks really want to learn how to create compelling, co relatable quality art, go follow the Critical Drinkers YouTube channel and keep your nose out of politics and stop poisoning the public with your fantasy social worldview. Unless you want more and less. You want to make more Republicans? And if that's what you want, truly, we don't want you and the Democratic Party anymore. I mean, come on, man, you are dooming us all here. Seriously, Jack, I have a serious and difficult job here as president. Don't you know that? And all of you Democrats abandoned me before it was done. Then you pushed Kamala too hard, and you all then abandoned her, letting Trump win. And I hope you all enjoy the Trump plan you helped make. So now all you crazy narcissistic, they, them, use, uses, whatever, and fellow Democrats can go eat a big one. And up yours, that's right, go eat a big one and up yours. And see, that's the beauty of being a senile old man. I can rant and rave about anything I want, and it's kind of normal behavior. That's right, I can say anything I want. And all you dingbat Democrats could have. Use that in our favor. If you would have just given me a few more months in Kamala and I could. I've had four more years in the White House. But you just had to blow the opportunity, didn't you? I mean, what a stupid move you all did. So I really hope you enjoy the MAGA country you helped create. You helped build it. One nutty stone by nutty stone. With liberal justice warrior kooky spackle motor to hold it together. Yep, Jack. Enjoy as for me, I've got a MAGA hat. And I'm going to work in Trump's administration as of the end of January. It'll be huge. So finally, thank you all so very much for hurting me hurting my administration, 
hurting the legacy, hurting the Democratic Party, and hurting the United States. Yes, I think you really screwed things royally. And the truly sad part is, the sad part is, that you all would probably do it all over again the same way. Because you really don't even know what you did wrong. That's because you are all senile, too, in your own way. And I feel sorry for you all. It took my over 80 years, 80 years for me to get that way. So really, what's all your excuse? Well, I'll pray for you. They just told me President Biden is going to step down, and I am like, no, 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 this can't happen. Poor, poor Kamala, she's going to get destroyed by Trump. I think I should run. Makes more well, sense, well, right? looks like they just screwed over poor Joe. Are they going to make me and go out? Let me be absolutely and scum for Harris. I, I really don't want to do that. Trump will destroy her in November. Pay attention to what's going on. You know what? I'm proud to share a moment like this with you. Oh, juicy. Without a doubt. The best thing for the country is for President Biden to step aside. Then the whole country will rally around Vice President Harris. She will then ride such a huge wave of populism that she will just destroy Trump at the polls. Trust me, it will happen. I know I'm right about this. I always am. You'll see. Trust me. But hey, if not, I hear Canada is nice this time of year. Am I right? As long as we never give up, and as long as we keep fighting. To my beloved Doug and our family, I love you so very much. To President Biden and Dr. Biden, thank you for your faith and support. To Governor Walls and the Walls family, I know your service to our nation will continue. And to my extraordinary team, to the volunteers who gave so much of themselves, to the poll workers and the local election officials, I thank you, I thank you all. Look, I am so proud of the race we ran, and the way we ran it, and the way we ran it. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background, united by love of country, with enthusiasm and joy in our fight for America's future. And we did it with the knowledge that we all have so much more in common than what separates us. Now I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> But we must accept the results of this election. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition, and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. A fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. 
and anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. At the same time, in our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but to the Constitution of the United States. And loyalty to our conscience and to our God. My allegiance to all three is why I am here to say, while I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. The fight, the fight for freedom, for opportunity, for fairness, and the dignity of all people. A fight for the ideals at the heart of our nation, the ideals that reflect America at our best. That is a fight I will never give up. I will never give up the fight for a future where Americans can pursue their dreams, ambitions, and aspirations. Where the women of America have the freedom to make decisions about their own body and not have their government telling them what to do. We will never give up the fight to protect our schools and our streets from gun violence. And America, we will never give up the fight for our democracy, for the rule of law, for equal justice, and for the sacred idea that every one of us, no matter who we are or where we start out, has certain fundamental rights and freedoms that must be respected and upheld. And we will continue to wage this fight in the voting booth, in the courts, and in the public square. And we will also wage it in quieter ways, in how we live our lives, by treating one another with kindness and respect, by looking in the face of a stranger and seeing a neighbor, by always using our strength to lift people up, to fight for the dignity that all people deserve. The fight for our freedom will take hard work, but like I always say, we like hard work. Hard work is good work. Hard work can be joyful work. And the fight for our country is always worth it. It is always worth it. <laughs> to the young people who are watching, it is... <laughs> I love you. <laughs> to the young people who are watching, it is okay to feel sad and disappointed. But please know it's gonna be okay. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. The important thing is don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop trying to make the world a better place. You have power. You have power. And don't you ever listen when anyone tells you something is impossible because it has never been done before. You have the capacity to do extraordinary good in the world. And so to everyone who is watching, do not despair. This is not a time to throw up our hands. This is a time to roll up our sleeves. 
This is a time to organize, to mobilize, and to stay engaged for the sake of freedom and justice and the future that we all know we can build together. Look, many of you know I started out as a prosecutor and throughout my career I saw people at some of the worst times in their lives. People who had suffered great harm and great pain. And yet found within themselves the strength and the courage and the resolve to take the stand, to take a stand to fight for justice, to fight for themselves, to fight for others. So let their courage be our inspiration. Let their determination be our charge. And I'll close with this. There's an adage and historian once called a law of history true of every society across the ages. The adage is, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. I know many people feel like we are entering a dark time, but for the benefit of us all, I hope that is not the case. But here's the thing, America, if it is, let us fill the sky with the light of a brilliant, brilliant billion of stars. The light, the light of optimism, of faith, of truth, and service. guide us, even in the face of setbacks, toward the extraordinary promise of the United States of America. I thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. I thank you all. President Kamala Harris, her husband Doug Emhoff, uh, at the conclusion of about a 15-minute speech, the uh, vice president saying uh, that she does concede the race of Donald Trump, but she says, I do not concede the fight that... That's right, I'm Donnie T, and I approve this message. Great speech, Kamala. You ran a good race.